us for what is hopefully the first of many conversations throughout the course of the year on the Farm Bureau guest line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team, Mississippi Farm Bureau. Teddy, of course, with uh, Baseball America. Teddy, it's been a while. I I guess we haven't talked since late June. Uh, Great to catch up with you as we get really close to the start of a new year. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's coming real fast now. So let's start with a, a quick thought on Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Southern Miss, and then I'd love to get into the uh, the preseason top 25 that you guys did at Baseball America and ask you some questions about that. Uh, Ole Miss, of course, the reigning national champions, they, they lose some important pieces, some experience in the lineup and on the mound, uh, especially with Dylan Delucio on the mound, who was so good at the end of the season a year ago. And yet you guys have got them uh, in the top 10, uh, at number 10 going into the new season. Uh, what's your thought on this Mike Bianco team going into 2023? I'm really excited for it. You know, I, I think that when you can have some star power like Jacob Gonzalez, like Hunter Elliott, um, you know, it seems like Kemp Alderman's ready to kind of make that jump. I, I think there's uh, there's a lot to like about this team. I think the newcomers look really good. I think the offense has a lot of potential. They're going to have to figure some things out on, on the mound. Of course, they had to do that last year, and maybe it took them longer than uh, than they would have liked. But, you know, I, I think that's kind of a familiar position. But you're starting with a pretty strong point, knowing that Hunter Elliott can uh, can do a really good job on Friday nights for you. So I like where they're at, and, and I think they can, uh, they can make another deep run this year. Mississippi State, so many injuries a year ago, none more, the, uh, more significant than, than Landon Sims, and I guess it was week three of the season. I think Chris Lamona said when it was all said and done, they had eight significant injuries to uh, to pitchers, and the offense kind of lost itself at the end of the year. Mississippi State had a big offseason in terms of freshmen coming in through the recruiting class, uh, but also in the transfer portal in terms of bouncing back from where they finished a year ago, uh, which was last in the SEC and not making the tournament. What what should be the expectation this year for Mississippi State? You know, I, this team is like the hardest team to figure out in the country, I, I swear. Like, they, they have a lot of talent. Um, you know, you can look at it and be very optimistic. You can look and see what A&M, what Auburn did a year ago and know that worst to first is uh, – it was is possible with transfer portal additions, and you can look and you can see some really nice things, especially offensively. You know, Hunter Hines is coming back, having hit 16 home runs. Uh, you know, they have some other pieces back, but you know, at the same time, you look at that pitching staff, and a lot's got to change, a lot's got to get better, and you know, so I, it, it's hard for me to put an expectation on this team. I, I think that you know, obviously. In Starkville, the expectation is always going to be to make the NCAA tournament and then see where you go from there. But, um, you know, to ask more out of this team on, on February 2nd, like that, that would be hard for me to do. Southern Miss, uh, they return a ton of pieces offensively. M- most of their key contributors, I think it's the top five and like seven of the top eight hitters from a season ago. They've got a preseason All-American uh, on the mound. They lose Hurston Waldrop to Florida, who is also a preseason All-American by uh, by most accounts. Is this another year where you look for Scott Berry's team to be very much in the mix to uh, to potentially host? I do. I, I think this team has a, a lot of potential. It's a, it's a really old lineup. Uh, like you mentioned, a lot of those guys are back. Um, it's not going to be the most offensive team in the country, I don't think, but they have a lot of experience there, and, and there's a lot to to like just from the, the experience standpoint and, and the age standpoint. And then on the mound, I mean, to have Tanner Hall fronting a rotation is, uh, is a massive, massive boost for anyone in the country. There's a lot that's going to be new on the mound since they had so many pitchers drafted last year and Waldrop transferred. Uh, but, you know, if there's one thing that we're coming to expect from uh, from Coach Oz down there is that they're going to pitch, and I trust him to, to find the right pieces and, and put them around Tanner Hall. And, again, if you're building with that, that is your, your base, that you have this All-American ace, that, you know, that, that's just a, a great spot to start with if you are starting to reset on the mound. That is a, uh, a pretty good cornerstone. Visiting with Teddy Cahill from Baseball America on the Farm Bureau guest line. So let's talk about your preseason top 25 of course, at Baseball America, you can check that out at BaseballAmerica.com. I feel like you guys, in addition to everybody else that does a poll, has LSU 1, Tennessee 2. And it's it's interesting to me because I look at these two teams and I go, I agree that LSU is loaded offensively. 
and they were spectacular in the transfer portal and spectacular from a recruiting standpoint. But I've still got questions on the mound. And with Tennessee, I have zero questions on the mound. They've got more start starters than they've got spots in the rotation. And yet that offense that was so good a year ago is missing a bunch of pieces. Why is it LSU won Tennessee two and, and not vice versa? Well, I think that a lot of it stems from what you can see with LSU, uh, you know, what they're trying to do. If you if if the mound is your question mark and you bring in a literal major league baseball pitching coach and then you add uh an all American in Paul Skeens and mm -hmm. a guy in Thatcher Heard that was a top one hundred draft prospect coming out of high school, not not top one hundred as a high school player, just top one hundred period. Um and then you get Ty Floyd back who has a ton of potential. Um, you know, all of that points to really good things on the mound. I can point to some good things about Tennessee offensively. You know, Griffin Merritt was the American conference player of the year a season ago. He transfers in. I really trust that the Tennessee player development is going to work with some of these younger players. Uh, but I, I think some of it is just that the offense at LSU, I, I, I think it's more than good enough to carry the pitching staff. And I, I do like the additions that they made on the mound, maybe more than I like the additions that Tennessee made offensively. But that said, again, like I really trust the player development at Tennessee. Like I think their offense is still going to be really good. You've got Florida at number three, Teddy. And I raised my eyebrows a little bit at that because of Florida underachieving in recent years. They, they've been fine, but given what we came to expect under Sully and the Florida Gators, it feels like they haven't played to that standard. I, I know they've been hit hard by the draft. I know they've had some injuries along the way. Why is it that this is the year that we should actually be believing that Florida is a top five team? You know, I, I honestly don't even think that it is. Like okay. 2021, when they uh, were number one in the country and returned everyone from a team that, like, was the best team in the country when, when the season ended, like, that was the team we were supposed to believe in. So, like, if, if you're supposed to pick a team in the last, you know, since they went to Omaha last in 18, that was the team to believe in, it's that team. Now, this team I like. You know, like, I don't, I, I, it, it's hard. I, that, that question is really hard for me. Um, but I think that just on the base of talent, uh, you know, we mentioned Hurston Waldrop already. He's at Florida. He joins forces with Brandon Sproat, who goes unsigned as a third rounder a year ago. So you have potentially one of the best one, two punches in the country. And I do think that's one thing that's been missing since Brady Sinner and Jackson Coar went on to pro ball after 2018, that they haven't had a one, two punch like that they have the potential to have this year. And then offensively they have, you know, if, if Dylan Cruz isn't the best hitter in the country, it's Wyatt Langford probably at Florida. Yeah. He had 26 homers a year ago. It's a great piece to build around. They have some nice pieces to, to fit around him, but he's the cornerstone. And, you know, I don't have a great answer for why Florida hasn't been back to Omaha since 2018, um, I, they were on track to make it in 20. Uh, but you know, the last couple of years, you're right. It's, it hasn't been what they were billed to be. Can this year be different? It should be different, but you know, that, that is something that's hanging out over their heads. I, I, I think that's fair. Hey, last thing for you, about a minute and a half left a year ago, Auburn was kind of the surprise team in the sec, right? They, they, they had the college world series appearance and then they were awful. And then they bounced back and they're in the college world series again. Is there a team in the SEC that you think could be last year's Auburn? Uh, well, Alabama is kind of who I'm saying. Everyone else in the SEC West has been to Omaha in like the last five years. So maybe it's the tide's time. If you look at them, they're pretty experienced. They return a rotation from a year ago. Uh, everyone is in their third, fourth, or fifth year of college baseball in that rotation. Uh, they returned seven regulars from their lineup. Now, the issue is that they weren't very offensive last year, so they're going to have to be more offensive. But if they can be a little more offensive, they have the pitching that they, they could sneak up on some people. And, you know, I know, like, if you look at some polls, you'll find Alabama ranked. But if you're looking for someone to, to sneak up in the SEC, I, I, I think it's them. Teddy, a great first conversation. Look forward to talking more about this season as it gets underway two weeks from tomorrow. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. We're certainly looking forward to it. Thank you, my friend.